In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. The first section. The early history, chapter 1 to chapter 11. Chapter 1. Creation of the world. The divine inspiration began the Holy Bible by proclaiming God. As a creator who prepared everything for the sake of man. Setting him forth through love until, finally, entering with him into his eternal kingdom, to enjoy the everlasting glories. An introduction. One God, the Creator. One. Two, the Spirit of God hovering over the face of waters. Two. Three, the first day. Let it be light. Three to five. Four, the second day. The firmament. Six to eight. Five, the third day. The plants. Nine to thirteen. Six, the fourth day. Creation of the great lights. Fourteen to nineteen. 7 the 5th day. The reptiles, fishes, and birds. 20 to 23. 8 the 6th day. The animals and man. 24 to 31. Introduction. In this study I like to be committed to the spirit of the church. That sees the scripture, not as a scientific or philosophic book. But as a source of life with God, to be enjoyed and lived by man. That is why, when Saint Basil the Great, wrote his articles on the six days of creation, the Hexemerin, he made it clear that the work of the church is not researching the nature of things and creatures, but studying their work and benefits. Likewise, St. Augustine declared, it is beyond your ability to comprehend how God created these things, as you, yourself, are created to obey him as a slave, in order to comprehend him as a friend. It is as though we, being creatures of God, should receive his work with joy considering ourselves to be slaves, and, as he grants us wisdom and understanding of his mysteries, we would live with him as his friends and beloved. We can concisely introduce the following remarks on the presentation of the book of Genesis on the creation. A. This book presented us with the events of creation in a simple and true way, in order to be understood and enjoyed by the simple man, and appreciated for its depth by the scientist. The many Western scholars confirmed that what came in the book of Genesis did not contradict the scientific facts. According to modern thought, in their view, what came in the concerning the evolution of creation conforms to a great extent with the scientifically accepted theories in that concern. Many research studies on this issue were published by pious scientists, but I do not want to go into details that take us away from interpreting the word of God. The Church of St. George, the Great Martyr, in Sporting, Alexandria, Egypt, published a simplified study by Professor Dr. Yusef Ride, dealing with this subject, titled, Conforming, Between Modern Science and the Holy Bible. Likewise, the Diocese of Youth issued a publication on The Six Days of Creation by Dr. Farsi Elias. See, it is to be noted that the word day in the first chapter of the book of Genesis does not mean a 24-hour day, but implies a time era which may extend to millions of years. The sun, the moon, and the rest of the stars were not yet created until the fourth year, and so, there was, then, no time as we have nowadays. Likewise, there was day and night in the current tangible sense. Several church fathers confirmed this, like Saint Jerome, and even after creation, the scripture often speaks of a day in a sense beyond our comprehension. As for example the saying of the psalmist, For a day your courts is better than a thousand, Psalm 84.10. Also see Psalm 90. 4, and 2 Peter 3. 8. The word day in the scripture came according to several concepts. It often implies eternity where there is no beginning, as when the father addressed the son saying, You are my son, today I have begotten you, Psalm 2.7. Acts 13.32, Hebrew 1.5, and calling the Father, the Ancient of Days, Daniel 7.9, meaning the Eternal, about the day in the sense of its eternity beyond time. It is described as the day of the Lord, Acts 2.20, that is to say, His ultimate coming, when time comes to an end. And it is said of the Lord Jesus Christ, to Him be the glory both now and forever. Amen, 2 Peter 3.18. These some people may object to what came in the book of Genesis concerning the creation of the first man based on the discovery the fossilized bones of man dated to more than million years of 
age, beside the discovery of ancient art inscriptions of the early man how can we interpret that? When by a simple calculation, we realize that the present population of the world could not be the product of more than 6,000 years. This is the case if we assume that every family would produce three children and subtract a high ratio of mortality, both of natural and catastrophic causes. If we accept the theory of a million year history of man on earth, one single man in a million years would produce descendants, which thousand folds of the earth area could never accommodate. To assuming that every year of time could be several millions of years long, these fossilized bones could be related to mammals that carried some human features and capabilities, but lack the breath of life that God gave specially to Adam and Eve. These creatures therefore are not to be counted as human, even if they carry certain similarities. The if this book present to us a very concise chapter of the work of God at the beginning of creation, it means that God who is working for our sake, still keeps on his creative work in our life unceasingly. What he formerly did will not come to an end, he keeps on working in man's life to make of his depths a new heaven and a new earth to be dwelt by righteousness. According to the words of Christ our Lord, my Father has been working until now, and I have been working, John 5 17. Therefore in our present interpretation, we should seek the continuous work of God in our inner life, to create in us, continually, renewing our depths. I pray, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to be able to present the spiritual interpretation, along with the historical and literal interpretations. One God the Creator. The book of Genesis began with this simple introduction. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1-1. If the expression in the beginning does not imply a particular time, as time has not yet existed, because the stars with their precise systems were not yet there, but it means that the material world has a beginning, and not eternal. As some philosophers claim, sharing with God is eternity. This is what Saint Basil confirmed in his work, The Six Days of Creation or the Hexemrin, saying that the expression in the beginning does not imply a certain time, otherwise the beginning would have a beginning and an end. And so this beginning would have a start, thus entering into an endless series of beginnings. But, the beginning here means a preliminary movement, and not a time quantity. As for example saying, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, Proverbs 9, 10. He also says, do not assume, man, that the seen world has no beginning, just because the celestial bodies move in a circular course, that because of the difficulty to fix a point of beginning for that circular movement, you think it is by nature, with no beginning. He also says, whatever begins at a certain time, would also end at a certain time. This does not imply the existence of time at the beginning of the movement, but confirms the uprooting of the theory of eternity. Although there was no time, yet, there was a beginning, before which the world was not. Science confirms the non-eternity of material. Several church fathers adopt, beside this literal or historical interpretation for in the beginning the symbolic or spiritual interpretation, believing that it means in Jesus Christ, or in the word of God the heavens and the earth were created. And the following are some of these interpretations. The Son, himself, is the beginning. When the Jews asked, and who are you? He answered them, saying, I am from the beginning, John 8 25, Saint Augustine, who is the beginning of everything other than our Lord and the Savior of all men, 1 Timothy 4, 10, Jesus Christ, the firstborn over all creation, Colonel 1, 15, in that beginning, that is, in his word, God created the heavens and the earth, and as the evangelist John says at the beginning of his gospel, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made, that was made, John 1 1 3. The scripture does not talk about a time beginning, but about this beginning, that is, the Savior, by whom the heavens and the earth were made. Origin. Some think of the beginning in term of time, but he who contemplates in the Word the beginning, 
would realize that it carries more than just one meaning. Sometimes it means the cause the meaning here would be that the heavens and the earth exist and the cause actually. Everything was done by the word as in Jesus Christ, everything. And heaven or on earth were created, the seen and the unseen things. Saint Didymus the blind. In short, we say that God created the world in a certain beginning. And the world did not share eternity with him. On the other hand, the word of God is the beginning, who has no beginning. The creator of everything. In the beginning Elohim created. The heavens and the earth, Gen 1 1. The noun Elohim came in plural, while the verb created. According to the Arabic version, came in singular, as the creator is. The Holy Trinity, the one in essence, in nature, and in deity. The prophet Moses confirmed that God is the creator. Thus uprooting from his people the many legends that filled the world at that time, concerning the topic of creation. As well as the claim of certain philosophers that the world came as a mere chance. Professor Dr. Yusef Raya discussed that issue in his work. Finally, he says that Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Meaning that the heavenly, with all their hosts, were created first. To be followed by earth, and all that belonged to it. If the heavens refer to the human soul, where God chooses. To dwell, as his heavens, and the body, through his sanctification. Becomes a holy earth, in Jesus Christ, we would enjoy. These heavens and earth, that is to say, we enjoy a soul. That is a temple for the Lord, and a sanctified body that accounts. Of his kingdom to the Spirit of God in the waters. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters, Genesis 1, 2. It was said that the earth was without form and void and, according to the Septuagint version, unseen and incomplete. Saint Basil the Great explains its being unseen by the fact that man was not yet been created to see it, because it was completely covered with water, and light is not yet shown on it, thus, making everything obscure. As to it being incomplete that was because of its inability of producing plants. At any rate, if the divine inspiration declared that the Father has created the heavens and earth by his word, here is revealed the role of the Holy Spirit that has been hovering over the face of the waters to create out of the formless and void earth, a good and beautiful world. The Holy Spirit, up to this very day, descends on the waters of baptism, to sanctify it, to make man who is corrupted by sin, that made him a ruined and void earth, incomplete and unseen because of being deprived from God's lights, and a new heaven and a new earth, that is to say, granting us the new birth, in which we enjoy a sanctified soul, with the image of God our Creator, and a sanctified body. These members are instruments of righteousness for God. The following are some quotes from the Church Fathers on this matter. The first waters begot life, so one should not wonder that the water of baptism is also able to grant life the Spirit of God was carried on the holy waters, he who recreates whomever is baptized. The Holy One was carried on the sanctified waters, or rather on the waters that receive sanctification from him. By that, the water was sanctified by the Spirit, and was given the ability to sanctify. That is why, if water has been the first factor in the topic of creation, it got the secret of sanctification through beseeching God. Tertullian. The new creation is realized by the water and the Spirit. In the same way that the world was created, when the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. St. Clement of Alexandria. The water was the beginning of the world, as the Jordan was the beginning of the Gospel. Saint Cyril of Jerusalem. If baptism on that day was pre-proclaimed through the shadow, there could not be a true and sure baptism without the Spirit. Saint Jerome. As to the expression hover Saint Basil says that a Syrian scholar believes that the Syrian language is capable of giving more meaning than the Hebrew being translated as to embrace as though the spirit like in a bird embraces eggs, to provide them with life through its own warmth. Saint Ambrose believes that the movement of the spirit here is a continuous movement of love for creative work in the life of man, saying, how can he who has been moving before the creation of the earth cease to move after creating it?